Welcome to True Projects. In this video, we are going to explain about the project, which is Survey on Abstractive Transcript Summarization of YouTube Videos. So before getting into the execution, let us understand what is a project about. Nowadays, thousands of video recordings, they are being created and they are shared on the internet every day. And it is becoming increasingly difficult to spend time to watch such videos. So just think, if you are searching for a concept in the YouTube, we get many suggestions. We'll see it practically. We will search for the concept that is random forest, which is machine learning algorithm. So here, if you are searching for random forest, there are many suggested videos. And if you have to watch each of these videos, it will take so much of our time. Instead, if you watch a video and if that video has no proper content in it, and if it is not clearly explained, so much of our time will get wasted. So just think if there is any system that will summarize the YouTube video and it will give a transcript of that YouTube video. Sounds great, right? So in this project, we are going to develop a system called an abstractive transcript summarization of YouTube videos. In the base paper, it was discussed that audio only and text only systems, they are traditional systems which were used for summarizing the transcripts of YouTube videos. But these had the limitations that were they could not extract subtitles and they could not synchronize text with the timestamps. It is nothing but they face the difficulty in aligning text context with the specific time points. And also existing systems that are AS, OBS and Python libraries for audio text conversion. These were used for summarizing the transcripts, but these also face the limitations and that way they could not capture nuanced information from complex videos. So to overcome those limitations in the base paper, Sequence to sequence and Pegasus are the algorithms that are proposed and these are natural language algorithms. So let's understand these models. Coming to sequence to sequence, it is abstractive method. That is, it generates a summary that contains new words, phrases, and it rephrases the content from the original text. The sequence to sequence, it converts sequence of input data into another sequence of output data. It consists of encoder and decoder networks and they are implemented using LSTM. First, encoder processes input sequence, that is the transcript, and encodes that transcript into a fixed length vector, and that is called context vector. Coming to decoder, this decoder network takes the context vector as the input, and it generates the output sequence step by step, that is, it generates the summary. Coming to Pegasus, it is extractive algorithm. It extracts important information that is sentences directly from the original text to create a summary without altering the content and process the original wording and structure. Pegasus, it utilizes self-attention mechanism to capture relationship between word and then first analyzes the input text to identify important information and then uses a pre-trained model to rewrite this information in a short while preserving the essential meaning. Moving on, these are the three algorithms that we have built in the project. The first two are proposed models in the base paper. The last one is the ensemble technique, which is proposed by us. Along with the ensemble technique that is proposed by us, we also built proposed models of the base paper to see how well the ensemble technique is performing well than Pegasus and sequence to sequence. Let us understand this ensemble technique, which combines two powerful algorithms that are BERT and simple T5. BERT, it refers to bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. And simple T5, it is a simplified version of the T5, that is, text-to-text -text transformer. BERT is known for understanding the meaning of text, while simple T5, it excels at summarizing the text. In the project, BERT, it first processes the input text, understanding the transcript meaning and the context. Then, Simple T5 takes this processed information and generates concise summaries of the YouTube video transcripts. By combining BERT's understanding with simple T5's summarization skills, the project aims to create accurate and informative summaries of video content. As we have understood algorithm, now we will move on to execute the project. To execute, first we have to open the code folder. This is the code folder of the project and these are the source code files. So now let us understand all these files, how will they be used in the project? So coming to the first file, which is dataset, 
I'm opening it. Here we have the CNN news data set in the Excel sheet. In this sheet, we have three different columns that are ID, article, and the highlights column. This is the ID for this article. And here we have corresponding highlight to this particular article. In the data set, we have different types of articles which consist of various topics in it. And for each article, we have highlight that is it summarizes main points of this particular article. Similarly, we have for all other articles also. So we use this data set to train and symbol technique and also the other techniques which are built in the project. Now let us close this. Get back. Moving forward to the next folder, which is static. In this folder, we have files related to project styling and interactivity. These include CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap files. These files are crucial for enhancing visual appeal and functionality of the project's web interface. This is templates folder. Here lies all the HTML pages utilized in the project. They are index.html, about.html, etc. Each HTML file represents a different page of the website and provides a structure and layout for displaying content to the users. The next file is the app.py file. This Python file encompasses the front-end logic of the project. It handles server-side operations, including processing user requests, interacting with the database, and dynamically generating content that to be represented in HTML templates. These are the model files which contain the algorithm information and that will be loaded into the project code during runtime. This is the notebook.ipynb file. This file is a Jupyter notebook file which contain a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. It allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for the data science. This is the signup.db file. This file is a database file which is used to store the user information. Now we will execute the project. To execute, we need to copy the path of the code folder from the address bar. So I'm copying the path. Now we need to open the Anaconda prompt. Using the command cd followed by the space, we need to paste the copied path and then click on enter. By this command, current directory will change to the code folders path. So here we can see that current directory is changed to the code folders path. Now we need to compile app.py file. For that, we need to give the command python space app.py and then click on enter. This command will execute Python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, Flash Framework will host the application locally at the default address, which is the local host and the port, unless configured differently. Now we need to copy this local link provided by the Flash Framework and paste it in any web browser. So I'm copying the link. I prefer Google Chrome, so I'll paste it in that. Here we need to paste the link and then click on enter. This is the web page of the project and this web page is displayed in the browser. And this is developed using Flash Framework. So first we need to sign up. For that, click on sign up and enter all the registration details if you are registering newly. I have already registered and I have an account in it, so I'll directly sign in. So click on sign in. Here we need to provide our credentials, which are the username and the password. So I'm giving my username and the password. Now click on sign in. We have signed in successfully and we are redirected to prediction page. So here we can see a URL box in which we have to give the URL of any YouTube video that has captions. So to give URL, first we have to open the YouTube. So I'm opening the YouTube. In the introduction to our project, we have searched for random forest algorithm explanation. So we will search for the same again. So we will try uploading the URL of this video. I'm copying it. I'll get back to the application. Here we need to paste the URL. And now we need to click on summarize to get the summarized transcript. So here we have summarized transcript of the YouTube video. And now if you click on speak, it will speak out the transcript. So click on speak.
Less than pad greater than the random forest algorithm is a collection of multiple random decision trees. It's much less sensitive to the training data which could result in high variance. The first step is to build new datasets from random, less than, s greater than. Now we will upload some more URLs of the YouTube videos. So click on home, get back to the YouTube. We will upload YouTube videos, that is YouTube URLs from our True Projects channel. So I'm opening True Projects channel. So I'm going to copy this video's URL. I'm copying the URL. Paste the URL here. Now click on summarize. Here we got the summarized transcript of the video. Here we have the summarized transcript and now if we click on speak, it will speak out the transcript. So click on speak. Less than pad greater than project focus is to develop a system using YOLOV5 which is a state of the art object. Detection algorithm known for its accuracy and speed. YOLOV5 is a state of the art object detection algorithm known for its accuracy and speed by Training the model on annotated data sets containing examples of normal and abnormal activities. YOLO v6, YOLO v7 and YOLO v8 exist the project specifically employs YOLO v5 less than s greater than. Now we will give some more URLs of the videos. So get back to the application that is YouTube. This time, we'll upload drug overdose detection using machine learning video. So, I'm copying the URL. Get back to the web application. Paste the URL here. And now click on summarize. So here we have the summarized transcript that contains main points and essential information of the original video. So if we just read this summarized transcript, we will get to know what is the video about. We'll upload some more YouTube URLs. So get back to the YouTube. Now we will search for a movie trailer. So I'm searching for Vampire Diaries trailer. I'm going to copy this video's URL. So this is the trailer of Vampire Diaries. So I'm copying it. Click on home. Paste the URL. And now click on summarize. So here is the summarized transcript of the Vampire Diaries trailer. If we just read this, we can understand what is in the video. Now we will give some more URLs. So get back to the YouTube. Now we will search for originals trailer. So I'm going to copy this video's URL. Get back to the web application. Click on home, paste the URL, and now click on summarize. So this is the summarized transcript of the original trailer. In this way, just by giving the URLs, that is YouTube URLs to the system, it will give the summarized transcript that contains main points and essential information of the original video. And in the about page, we have comparison graphs. So we will see comparison graphs of the project. So here we have two comparison graphs of the project. One is for Rouge 1 and the other one is for Rouge L. We have already told you that we are going to use Rouge technique 
to evaluate the performance of the algorithms built in the project. So what is this Rouge? Rouge is recall oriented understudy of justing evaluation. That is, it is a set of metrics used to evaluate the quality of automatic text summarization and machine translation. It measures the similarity between a generated summary and one or more reference summaries based on overlapping words that are n-grams or sequences. Rouge is widely used in natural language processing researches to assess the effectiveness of summarization and translation algorithms. So coming to the first graph, which is Rouge 1 comparison graph, on x-axis, we have Rouge 1 score of each algorithm and on y-axis, we have algorithms built. This Rouge 1 checks how many individual words match between the summary and the reference summary. Coming to Rouge L comparison graph, similar to Rouge 1, here also on x-axis, we have Rouge L score and on y-axis, we have all the algorithms built in the project. Rouge L checks how much of the longest sequence of words in the same, the summary and the reference. From the graphs, we can observe that the model proposed by us, that is ensemble technique BIRD simple T5 has performed well than the base paper's proposed model. Now click on sign out. Thank you for watching video. For more projects, please visit our website www.trueprojects.in. For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.